Jude 1 and 24 and 25. Actually, it's the only chapter in Jude, so it's verses 24 and 25. The Bible said, Now unto him that is able. Everybody say, He is able. To keep you from falling or stumbling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior. If you'll notice that, there's not but one Savior. Jesus came, he was born a Savior. So he said, to our only wise God, our Savior. That means Jesus is God. And majesty, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Or let it be so. I want to preach to you from the first phrase of this 24th verse where it said, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Everybody say, God is able to keep me from falling. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. The previous verses of this particular chapter of Jude, as Jude was writing, he said, I want you to give all diligence and to earnestly contend for the faith. Why? Because certain men have crept in unawares, ungodly, lascivious. He talked about Sodom and Gomorrah and fornication and going after strange flesh. He talked about the filthy dreamers so at the beginning of the chapter, he got them set up to tell them that there's going to be some bad stuff happening between now and the end of this chapter. And again, he talked about certain men crept in unawares, ungodly, lascivious, Sodom and Gomorrah again, fornication, going after strange flesh and filthy dreamers. But he didn't end the chapter there. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I'm not what I'd say an avid reader, but I've read a little bit. But uh, there's some some books and some uh, things that you don't want it to end right now. You want something else to happen before it's over. Am I right? You can't wait till you get to the end of the chapter to find out really how it ended. Well, I'm excited about the end of the chapter because I know at the end of the book we win. Amen. So uh, he began to list these terrible people and things that was going to happen But he didn't finish the chapter with that. He said, now, or, but he is able to keep you from falling. Oh, yeah. uh, I've watched a few people fall before. I have fallen, uh, tripped and fallen. How many has ever fallen before? Some of you not raised, you're lying. (laughs) Everybody here has fallen some time or the other, haven't we? Whether it was a, 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 uh, a child or a person. Do you have a picture of a fallen person back there for me? Do you have that? Can I see that? Do I, do I, I don't see that. Somebody come up here and fall for me. No. Uh, I'm supposed to have some pictures back there. Okay. But the Bible said, Romans 3.23 said, For all have sinned and come 
short of the glory of God. Now, I'm talking on the spiritual application, of course. The original word translated short has 12 different words in the, in the King James Version. And uh, from the original, it was uh, uh, 12 different ver- words. Come behind or short or be destitute or fall or lack or suffer need. The CE version of the scripture said, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, yes. All of us, we were conceived in sin and shapen in iniquity. So we know what it means to be a sinner. If we are of any age at all, we know what it means to have been a sinner. Because all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, that's a sad thing. I I know I'm speaking a little negative right now, but uh, hang on a little while. I want to tell you all have come short. We all can relate to each other about falling. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that we can get back up and go again. As a child, one of the first things we learn is the fear of falling. Have you got a picture now of, of a fallen child? Amen. But they, but you know what a, a, a child will do? He's not afraid too much to get back up and try again. They'll hold on to your hand, and, and they're glad that you can give them that stabilization that they needed. As an older person, one of our worst fears is falling because our bones get uh, brittle and, uh, and we bruise and we, and we get cuts and, uh, and uh, the, the, the fear of not being able to get back up. I've fallen and I can't get up, somebody said. But I got news for you. Yes, you can. You may not be able to get up by yourself, but yes, you can. Amen. I've learned when I sit down now, it's a lot further down than it used to be. And when I get down, I've learned that it's a lot farther up than it used to be. But thank God I can still get up and we can go again. I just want to encourage somebody today. If you've fallen, you can get up. Does anybody know that for a fact? If you've ever fallen, can you stand and say, I can get up, I got up, and I'm going to go again? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The fear I can understand of a new convert after he has made a confession, after he's repented of his sins and and she's been filled with the Holy Ghost and they have had such a long life in, in destruction and a long life of disappointment and heartache and they can, uh, they can, uh, that, that, that their fear is that they will fall back and, and, and go back down. And they get this, what's the use syndrome? I tell you what the use is, is there's a heaven. What's the use is, there's a hell. That's why I'm going to get back up. That's why I want to go one more time. Because there's a hell I want to shun and a heaven I want to get to. Praise God. Somebody ought to get back up today. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. Noah walked with God for some 600 years. He walked with God in a wicked world. Noah stood alone for God. He was the only man on earth whom God saw fit to save from the judgment of the flood, he and his family. The opportunity to launch a new beginning he had 
for the human race. It stood before him. And what happened after he got off the ark? He got drunk and uncovered himself within his tent. Shocking, disgraceful, unbelievable. Is this the same Noah that walked with God for 600 years? Yes, it's the same Noah. I got news for you, sir. The Bible said, 1 Corinthians 10, 2, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. Come on, I can't hear you too good. Take heed lest he fall. Come on now. I want to tell you, I don't care how long you've served God. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how much tithes you paid. If you don't learn to keep praying, if you don't learn to keep on fasting, if you will, if you don't learn to keep on being faithful, that is, if you don't learn to keep on coming to church, you can fall. You don't have to, but he that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he. Oh, praise him just a little while. But there's better news. First Corinthians 10, 13 said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's not just you that's going to be tempted and tried. There's a whole lot of other folks that's been tempted and tried. But I got news for you. There's a whole lot of other folks that's got up again. Oh, no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God. Oh, I'm glad there is but God. I'm glad it didn't just end there. But God, who is faithful, he's always there. All you got to do is call on him. He's faithful. You're not going to get a busy signal. You're not going to drop signal if you just get in touch with him. But God, who will, he will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God is able to keep you, but he's not going to allow you to have anything but what you are going to be able to bear it, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may, that ye may, that ye may be able to bear it. Somebody ought to shout. I can make it. Let the temptation come. I can bear it. Somebody else has already borne it. I can bear it. Woo! I can make it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lot was an older man when his daughters got him drunk so they could lie with him. He fell. And David, who passed so safely through the snares of youth, fell in a mature age. He messed up. But David didn't quit. Mm, I said, David didn't quit. He got up again. He was a man after God's own heart. If you fall Get up again. Come on and get your heart after God's own heart. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 6 and 4. I want to change it just a little bit. Watch this. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. This is Hebrews 6, 4. And were made partakers of... The Holy Ghost, watch this, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers, verse 5, and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh 
and put him to an open shame. Amen. In other words, to deviate from the right path, to turn aside, to wonder, and here's the key, to apostatize, to error, or to fall away from the true faith, from worship of Jehovah. Now, this can stump some people up if they don't know the background of this. He said it's impossible if you've tasted the good word of God, powers of the world will come. If they fall away to renew them again into repentance, I'm thinking, whoa. But there's a difference in falling and falling away. All of us have fallen, but we have not fallen away. I dare say that there's not many of you here, if you've been in a very long period of time, that you have after you got the Holy Ghost, you, you fell. I got both hands. Come on, anybody else? I fell, but I didn't fall away. You know what? You know what? These Hebrews, if you will, this was written to the Hebrews. These Hebrews had been so long a time under the blood of bulls and goats. Right? They would, they would bring the sacrifices year after year so that they could get their sins atoned to the next year. Amen. And now it's come the time of Jesus' dispensation. There's seven dispensations, but I think Jesus had a dispensation. The time that he lived in the world. Okay? While he was here, he could say anything he wanted to to tell people how to be saved. Amen. No other time but that time. Come on. Amen. But here it was. Jesus has come on the scene, and now he's crucified once and for all. Not a bunch of lambs anymore. Not a bunch of sacrifices anymore. But he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Come on. That's why Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. So his blood was shed. Amen. Oh, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But here's what's happened. They heard this word, amen, about repenting. They saw these Jews, if you will, from hundreds of years past, if you, if you please, saw Jesus come on the scene, and their whole plan to get right with God had changed. They were used to offering the blood of bulls and goats. You got me? Follow me through now. But here comes Peter on the scene, the rest of the apostles. All you got to do now is repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, and receive the Holy Ghost. And those people that had done that, they better never go back and take up the blood of bulls and goats because he's already sacrificed for us. You don't go back to the blood of bulls and goats. If you do, it's impossible Woo! to renew you again into repentance. Why would somebody want to go get a goat and strip it and kill it? Come on now, when Jesus is the Savior of the world. Uh, whoo, I'm so happy I got a revelation on it. I'm so glad that I know there's a difference in falling and falling away. Praise God, if I fall, I sure don't want to fall away and go back to the blood of bulls and goats. I want to say, Jesus, you're still my Savior. Jesus, you're still my King. Jesus, you're still my Lord. Whoo, praise Him a little while. Praise. Let no man deceive you, Second Thessalonians 2, 3. By any means, for that day shall 
not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition or defected if you will from truth apostasy or forsake it's what that word falling away means to put away or revolt or deny I'd just like to warn you ahead of time we're in the end time Now I know why Daddy used to sit down and preach. He got tired. But I'm telling you, we're in the end time. If you're not careful, you can get disillusioned with the cares of this world, with worldliness. Lord, 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 here I go again. I'm reminded of Sister Peggy Guzman's grandson. Their daddy brought him in one day after they got in trouble. In the daytime, Mama said, when Daddy gets home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have your daddy talk to you, get with you, whip you, whatever. And so his daddy got, their daddy got home, them two little boys. His daddy brought them up together, and one little boy says, here we do a den. Well, here we do a den. Holiness is still right. It's not a dirty word in 2020. Women wearing dresses is not done away with. Come on. Come on. Immodest clothing, come on, is still wrong. Wearing shorts is still wrong. Fornication is still wrong. Sodomy is still wrong. Cutting your hair, women, is still wrong. Come on, but I got news for you. If you're not careful in this end time, you can fall away and not believe what you used to believe. You better hold on to this truth. You better hold on to this wholeness. You better hold on to this message. Come on, folks. Come on, I'm telling you. You better get a love for the truth. Oh, there'll be a falling away. Lord, I didn't plan on preaching that, but it's already preached. I'm not going to take it back. You know what happens? Some of these people get so worldly in their mind, they don't want to continue to hold on to truth. Thank God for a pastor that still preaches holiness. You better get with him when he preaches it and say, preach to me some more, pastor. Don't let up now because in the last days there'll be a falling away. And you know where falling away usually starts with our godly holiness standards being loosened up and let go. But I'm telling you, we better hold on to it. If you don't hold on to this, you won't hold on to water baptism. If you don't hold on to this, you won't hold on to Holy Ghost talking in tongues most likely. Woo, praise it. Uh, yes. All of that to get you back to this. There's a difference in falling and falling away. The phrase he used to keep from falling means here to preserve us from falling into sin, from yielding to temptation and dishonoring their God and religion. It means stumbling, if you will, as of a horse. If God only, who amidst the temptations of the world, can keep us from falling, who else can? He can do it, and if you trust him, he will do it. You don't have to fall. Amen. It's important and necessary for all believers that to have the assurance of the infinite resource of God himself, who alone is competent to keep us from falling in this life and to bring us to himself in the last day. He will 
perfect the work of sanctification so that the believers will be faultless or without sin in the end time. I just know God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. He will have a church. He will have a church. He will have a glorious church. He will have a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. I just want to be in it. I said, I just want to be in it. Woo, praise him. <laughs> they were in danger of stunning because of their ungodly influences. And we are too. Because we have ungodly influences. Oh yeah. But the Bible said he is able to keep us from falling. The story goes of a little boy walking through the snow, through the mud, the treacherous terrain, as little boys want to do. Independent. He, he uh, finally realized he couldn't walk alone, so he would hold on to his father's little finger in the rough terrain. He would still slip, and he would let go and fall. Again, he would grab his father's little finger. Do you have that picture? He would have the, the, uh, the, the father's little finger and fall and again. But the little boy finally received the revelation and said, Dad, it would be better if you hold my hand. That'll keep me from falling. Brother James Williams, some kind of witness, some kind of testimony, one awesome person that come through this church, he used to lead that song that was written by Albert E. Brumley. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary, this would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day you help me do the best I can, for I need thy light to guide me day and night, blessed Jesus, hold my hand, oh Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power. Oh, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. Oh, yeah, when I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Come on, Lord. Get your hand on my hand. Hold my hand, Jesus. Hold my hand. I feel like singing two more verses. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand as I onward go and daily meet the foe blessed Come on, somebody. You ought to say, get you. I like holding your hand, but I want you to hold my hand. Get a hold of me, oh Lord, and don't let me go. (laughs) 
I'm going to have to slow down or I'm going to pass out up here. I remember dating Sister Pat. Lord, she said, oh, Lord. Has it been that bad? No. 49 years. When I reached out to get her by the hand, I'm thinking if she's got one of them old dish rag hands. You ever shake hands? Anybody's got a dish rag handshake? They don't grip you. Come on. I would hold your hand. I ain't going to hold your hand. No, you want somebody else. I don't want, you know what? When you reach out to, and Jesus reaches out to hold your hand, don't you give him no dish rag, handshake. You grip down on it, and he'll grip down on yours. Hallelujah. And you can make, woo, you can make it all the way home. I don't know if Sister Pat, I doubt if she heard me preach that before we, before we, uh, uh, we were holding hands, but I know one thing, she knows how to hold hands. And I know one thing, God knows how to hold your hand. If you'll reach out to him, he'll reach out to you, and he'll keep you, he's able to keep you. When I wander through the valley dim toward the setting of the sun, lead me safely to a land of rest. If I a crown of life have won, I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Come on, I can't hear you. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. Yeah, I need thee every hour. Oh, yes, through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power. Yeah, here. My feeble plea, oh, Lord, look down on me. Yeah, when I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus. Woo, somebody ought to say, hold my hand, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is able to keep you from falling. He's, a, he's able to guard you. He's able to do whatever it takes to keep him from falling or stumbling. He can help you stand firm. Hallelujah. I said he can help you stand firm. New converts, put your hand in Jesus' hand. Put your hand in Jesus' hand. Woo. John 10, 29 said, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man. Can you read? Y'all be getting excited then. I said y'all be getting excited. No man is. God is able to keep us, and no man is able to pluck them out. We're going to make it because he is able. Woo. I said he is able. Deuteronomy 33 3 says, All saints are in thy hand. I don't know where everybody else is, but I do, I do know where the children of God are. They're in his hand. They're in his hand. Uh, 
Oh, that means once saved, always saved. No, that's not what it said. It said no man is able to pluck you out. You can get out. You can walk away. The Bible bears that out many times. The prodigal left the house. Demoth has forsaken me loving this present world. Jude talked about it, if you will. You can walk away from God, but nobody's able to pluck you out. If you want to be in it, nobody's able to pluck you out because he said, all sheep are mine. If David could take a lamb and hold it, where the, where, the she, where the lion and the bears and all the other animals couldn't get it, and he loved that, he loved his job, and he loved that sheep enough to hold it, that little lamb enough to hold it. My God is able. Come on, come on. Nobody is greater than my Father, which is able to keep us. Hallelujah! In the love of God, greater than all. Amen. All means, Pastor said, all means all. No man is able to pluck them out. The living Bible said, no one is able to kidnap them from me. God, the devil can't come get you as long as you are in his hand. I am persuaded in Romans 8 39. 8. 38 and 9, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor the principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be, can you read? Shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ our Lord. As long as you are in his hands, nothing can separate you from him. Ephesians 6, 11, 13. I'm skipping a verse or two. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Why? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principles, against powers, against rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in a high place. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that, what? Ye... That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We are able because he is able. You know what, the, you know what this teaches us? God does not excuse us from exerting our effort. In other words, I'm going to make you able because you put on the whole armor of God. Oh, one version said, so use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy whenever he attacks. And when it is all over, you will still be standing up. I'm telling you, you put on the whole armor of God. You keep praying. You keep living for God. You keep coming to church. You keep hearing the word. You keep praying through. You keep repenting. And he's going to be, he is able to make you able to stand. I can do all things, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I'm going to help you, but I'm going to strengthen you to stand on your own two feet and live for God. <laughs> wherefore, brethren, 2 Peter 1.10, wherefore the brethren, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Beloved but ye beloved Jude 2021, building up yourselves. Come on now. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. What's the next line say? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's up to us. If we want to be saved, we can be saved, but we got to do something about it. 
Come on, God's not going to brush your teeth and comb your hair and give you a shower and dress you for church. You got to get up and get to, come on now, you got to, I was going to say brush your teeth. You don't have to brush your teeth to be saved, but it sure is good for you to brush your teeth so I can stand you. But I'm here to tell you, you got to do some things. What I'm saying is you got to do some things on your own. God's not going to drag you into heaven. But if you'll put your hand in his and you'll get up one more time. I said if you'll get up one more time, God will help you make it. 2 Timothy 1, 12. Give me the picture if you got it back there. Give me the picture of the. The little engine, the little, the little railroad car. There you go. See that? For the which cause, Second Timothy one twelve. You don't have to put this one up, but listen, listen to me. For the which cause also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know whom I believed. He's able. Come on, he hung the stars in place, didn't he? Come on, he caused the rivers to flow, didn't he? Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, he healed the lame man, didn't he? The blind man, didn't he? Come on, set the captive free. I know he's still able. You know what? And he said, I am, Paul to Timothy said, and am persuaded that he is able to keep me. I think it was, I don't know what, I don't know what age I was. I don't even remember. It's been so long ago when I read or heard this little story of the, the little engine. The story, there's probably two or three versions of it. But the, 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 the switch track was there, and the little engine was sitting there to help move the trains from one track to the other or whatever. And here come this long line of heavy cars. Y'all remember this? How many remember this story? Remember? Some of y'all hadn't been to school yet? <laughs> it's been so long you forgot it, ain't you? Maybe I'm telling it so different you didn't even remember it. Maybe that's what it is. But... Here it goes. This long train of cars loaded down. This engine couldn't get it up the next hill. There was a hill that was coming on. He knew he could not make it over that hill, so he begged for help. Somebody help me get this, this train load of cars across this other hill. So nobody would help him, but this little engine sitting there at the switch track, if you will, said, let me try it. I believe I can. I'm going to work at it. So they hooked it up to him. He pulled it down the track, and he got to the edge of the hill, to the bottom of the hill, and he said, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I'm going to get this till y'all get it. I'm going to keep on till y'all get it. I think I can. 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 Until he got that train load of cars on top of that hill and went down the other side. And he said, I thought I could. I thought I could. I thought I could. I thought I could. I'm telling you, you got to think you can. If you're going to make it, you got to think you can. Hallelujah. I said, you got to think you can. And when you get over yonder, you're going to say, I know I could. I know I could. I made it. I made it. I've made it. I've made it. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him a little while. Praise him a little while. Praise him a little while. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm on page five. I got ten, five more to go, but I'm quitting. Hello. Somebody said hallelujah. Stand with me. Oh, yes. He's able to heal you. He's able to keep you. He's able to calm the wind. Come on. He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He can enable us. Come on. I said he can enable us. 
because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Well, my Bible said he is able to do abundantly above that which we're able, even able to ask. I want to get a little mileage out of that, okay? He is able to do abundantly above. You know what abundant means? It means more than enough. But the Bible said he's able to do abundantly above. He's able to do more than enough above. Get your hands out here with me. Get your hands. Put, put your hands out here about, about shoulder level. Okay. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than enough. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above that which we're able, even able to ask. Or think. Woo, I like that. I can think a whole lot of things. I mean, I can ask a whole lot of things. But I can think a whole lot more than I ask. But he's able. Come on, help me now. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we're even able to ask or think. My God is able to carry me all the way through. Woo, praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my God I'm serving. That's my Savior I'm serving. He's the one I've been baptized. That's, that's the name I've been baptized in. Yes. Right. Mm. Woo. I was baptized about 1950. Three, I believe it was. The little boy, six years old. Four, 1947 to 1953 is six years, ain't it? I think I was six years old when I was baptized. I got the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. And did you know what Pastor was talking about it the other night? 100% of people that get the Holy Ghost. What happens to them? What happens to them? They talk in tongues. Got the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. And you know what? Lord, how long ago has that been? That's been 67 years ago. Whew. Man, have I been through some stuff. Some ups and downs. Thank God I hadn't had to be in and out. I've fallen a few times, but I got up again. 67 years. I don't even look that old, do I? Lord, no, I don't look that old. Some of y'all might look that old, but I don't look that old. Day over 30. I like you. I... Woo. But if God kept me 67 years, he can keep you 67 years. My God is able to carry me through. Alan Oggs used to preach, you got to get up one more time than you get down. If you get up one more time, whoo, my God, if you get up one more time than you get down, you're going to get up on that great getting up morning. Get up again, get up again, get up again, get up a saint. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What he said
listen to this verse. Micah 7, 8 said, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Look here, devil. Hey, I may have fallen, but I'm rising again. I'm getting up again. I'm getting up again. And I'm going to get up again and again and again. I shall arise. Tell the devil in your face, I'm going to make it. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't you give up on God, don't give up on God, oh, cause he won't, he won't give up on you. Come on, somebody say you. that right now. Oh, don't, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you.